Hey everybody, this is video four in a video series on the Fed's ample reserve policy framework. That's right, the Fed now implements monetary policy using an ample reserve policy framework. Before 2008, they used a limited reserve policy framework. Since 2008, an ample reserve policy framework. Why is that? Because in 2008, they increased the amount of reserve balances banks held at the Fed by an ample or really an abundant or even a super abundant amount, okay? Basically, we went from about 20 billion of reserves that banks held at the, at the Fed to 2.8 trillion reserves that banks held at the Fed by 2014. So when we did that, things changed, things had to change, okay? And so under this new policy framework, the key to understanding it is to understand this demand for reserves curve that we've been talking about. In this particular video, I'm gonna to get to some of the nuances about this curve and about the federal funds rate in regards to the interest rate on reserve balances. Notice I do not have them equal right now, so I'm gonna talk about that. And the overnight reverse repurchase agreement rate, okay? And why that's a thing and why you'll see a lot of graphs look like this. But let me just do a really quick recap again about what's going on. Number one, when we had a limited reserve framework, the supply of reserves intersected the demand for reserves curve over here in this steep portion, and the Fed could use open market operations, open market purchases and sales to shift this curve left and right in that area and therefore affect the federal funds rate. So we put federal funds rate because this curve is written in respect to that rate, okay? Hopefully that makes sense. But since 2008, when the Fed put a ton of reserves into the banking system, or another way to say it is increase the reserve balances of banks at the Fed since banks hold their deposits at the Fed, when that happened, this portion of the curve started to extend very far to the right, and the supply curve now intersects that portion of the curve way off to the right, okay? Now, watch the first video one, two, and three to really get all the foundation you need, but in this particular video, I'm focused on this thing, because it's confusing when you encounter it in graphs that you see. So let's kind of get to the big thing, which is this, all right? Hopefully from the other videos you know, this curve, not so important. The important curve to understand is this, and the Fed is gonna use two of their administered rates, both of these are administered rates, to change that rate. Remember the flat portion, that thing right there is determined by the discount rate. Discount rate gives us a ceiling, but I really want you to know, not all that important for determining or establishing or influencing, maybe is the best word, the federal funds rate. What's really important are these two administered rates, their primary rate, their secondary rate. Now, here comes the confusion. When you start reading about this, you are going to be properly told that the interest rate on reserve balances is a reservation rate, which makes it a floor, okay? That the, that the interest rate on reserve balances is a floor for the federal funds rate. The problem is it is a soft floor, okay? It's very confusing when you hear it's a floor and then you see it written above the federal funds rate. At least it was for me. It almost looks like when you see pictures like this, which you will, even the Fed releases pictures that look like this, that the interest rate on reserve balances is actually kind of looks like it's almost maybe acting as a ceiling and the interest rate you know, associated with the overnight reverse repurchase agreement rate is setting the floor. Not so, okay? And none of the literature is gonna say that this is a ceiling, okay? It's just the visual makes you think that. The big thing is you need to know that's a floor and that's a floor, and then that's why we're confused because why is it above this if it's a floor? And again, because it's a soft floor, okay? So here's the deal. The interest rate on reserve balances is a floor when it comes to banks, okay? Banks will not lend their reserves in the federal funds market to earn the federal funds rate at a federal funds rate below the interest rate that they can earn on the reserve balances they keep at the Fed. Whew, I know that's a mouthful, but that's why it is a floor when it comes to banks, okay? It is the lowest federal funds rate that banks will accept, all right? So it is a floor when it comes to banks, but here's the thing. Banks are not the only entities operating in the federal funds market where the federal funds rate is determined. 
non-bank financial institutions also operate there. One of the big ones is government-sponsored enterprises, such as Freddie Mae and uh, uh, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. Sorry about that. Government-sponsored enterprises also interact there, and those government-sponsored enterprises they do not earn interest on their reserve balances. Okay, they don't have that. They don't have this interest rate available to them. They they're not allowed to do that. Only banks can earn interest rate, the or interest on reserve balances. Okay, so because of that, the federal funds rate somewhat drifts a little bit before below the interest rate on reserve balances because the Fed uses another administered rate, a secondary administered rate which is the interest rate associated rate associated again with the overnight reverse repurchase agreement rate for these other institutions not able to earn interest on reserve balances, okay? So stick with me, hopefully this makes sense. So this establishes a floor for all non-bank non -bank, uh, institutions that could operate in the federal funds market or other money markets, okay? So they need this other tool, this secondary tool, to truly put a floor on all short-term interest rates. That's what they're using this tool because it applies to a lot more institutions than just banks, okay? Hopefully that makes some sense, but let's just kind of get into it just a little bit and then we'll have one more video that really looks at the overnight reverse repurchase agreement rate and how it all works. But here is the deal. This interest rate is a way for the Fed to accept deposits or loans, however way you want to say it, from these other financial institutions and allow them to earn this. So this interest rate is an interest rate, it's, it's basically what's happening is these other financial institutions, non-bank financial institutions, are making very short term, like overnight, right, loans to the Fed and earning this interest rate. And that's why it puts in a floor on all money market rates because, hey, they're not going to accept no other, none of these non-bank financial institutions are going to accept an interest rate below this because, hey, I'm going to lend to the Fed because the Fed is the best thing I can lend to, right? It's the most secured loan I can make is to the Fed. They're never going to default. So I will never accept an interest rate or a non-bank financial institution never accept an interest rate below this. And so what ends up happening is the federal funds rate generally ends up being in between these two floors. That's right, again, they are both floors, but it ends up being in between those two floors because this interest rate is not um, available to all institutions that participate in money markets such as the federal funds market. So there you go. They use both of these rates, moving them up or down. Right now, we're fighting inflation. So what would the Fed do? They would move these up to move that federal funds rate. We can bet, for the most part, that federal funds rate, except in very strange situ situations, is going to remain locked in between. Think of them both as floors. Remember, the discount rate is the ceiling. They're both as floors. Lift them up, lift them down to do your monetary policy. That's what the Fed does now to implement their monetary policy, no longer open market operations, now it's changing these two administered rates. I've got one more video for you in this video series to really kind of talk a little bit more about this overnight reverse repurchase agreement rate, and then we should have this thing nailed. Thanks for tuning in. See you in that next video.